Good morning, everybody. It is good to be with you this morning. Before I ask you to stand, I'm going to ask you to stay seated, to take a deep breath and just be aware of where your, how your heart is beating, how your mind may be racing. But just, just take some time to quiet your heart and your mind and to feel God's presence among us. Please stand as you're able as we begin our service with our opening hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give us grace so that to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of a blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? 
So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. All right, so first, nobody could hear me, and now I feel like it's like super loud. So I am going to see how we, this works. So today we get to celebrate All Saints Day. Officially, it was on the fur, it was the first of November, always on the first of November. But we at the Episcopal Church get to move that feast to the closest Sunday, and so we are observing All Saints Day today. And why do we do All Saints? Why do we celebrate All Saints? Why is this such, a, such an important feast that we're even able to move it to make sure that everybody can hear it on a Sunday, right? And it is, I think, because it is an opportunity for us to remember. It's an opportunity for us to remember. It's a remembrance day. And so what is the church inviting us to remember? What is this time for us? What kind of reflection is the church inviting us to with this feast? So I think it has a couple of things. But one, I think it's an opportunity for us to remember all those who have gone before. Those people that we see no more, that lived among us, that were part of our lives, that loved us, that we loved, and they're not with us anymore. So to remember them, our parents, our grandparents, our siblings, our friends, our, love, our uh, partners, our husbands, our wives, right? And to remember them. And remember them in a particular way. Remember how they lived a saintly life. Because in the Episcopal Church, in the Christian Church, we talk about the saints, not only the St. Michael's and the St. John's and the St. Francis and Our Lady Guadalupe's and Mary of this and Mary of that, right? Like the big ones, right? We, got, we always think about the big ones. But All Saints Day is to remember all the people who've gone before, all the believers, all of those people who tried to live a saintly life as best as they could. And so we recall those people in our lives that taught us how to love better, how to forgive better, how to follow Jesus more closely. Who are those people that we remember? And to think about those characteristics, those prayers they taught us, those jokes they taught us, right? Those, those recipes they passed on to us, all the things that they did that now we can take with us and say, oh, they allowed us to live more fully, to love more deeply because of the way they modeled and the way they were how they follow Jesus. So that's what we're asked, we're invited to remember those, those people who taught us how, uh-oh, now I'm gone. No, you're good? Oh, look at that. We got people who take care of us, see, that's right. So that's what one opportunity for us, and why is it important to remember how those people lived in such an important way and how they taught us how to live better, I think it's because it allows us to remember that we can live that now. That those people who've gone before, we trust that God has 
kept God's promise, and they are now living in this space where they hurt no more, they don't worry anymore, they don't have to think about the things that we think about, right? And so that promise that they're now living this life fully closer with God, right? But it reminds us that we can start doing that, practicing that life now. That this world is a foretaste of what can be. And so we remember how they lived closer to Jesus' teaching, and we start emulating that too, then we can start bringing this kingdom that God has for us that is going to be all right now, even if it's not all right now. So that remembrance that this life is an opportunity for us to practice how God wants us to live always. So if we carry on these memories and we carry on how they lived and we start remembering that and trying to re and maybe recommitting ourselves to live that way as well, to take on some of those characteristics, deepen those characteristics in us that they, fought, that they shared with us so that we can start looking and seeing amongst us. Oh, look at that. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is now. I mean, this is John's text, but Mark keeps telling us it's now, right? And it's now when we live as if it is now. That's the recollection also, because the other thing that All Saints reminds us is as we do in every funeral, we are reminded that, God, that, that the death does not have the last word, that this isn't over, that we continue to live more fully and more closely when we move, when we care, when we move to the next world. That's the remembrance that we can have, remembering that we no longer have to fear death. And if we don't have to fear death, then we can live more freely. And if we can live more freely and love more freely, we can also then remember that at the end of the day, God has the last word. And that's what Revelation reminds us, right? That all things will be made new. That no one will be hurting anymore. That God will wipe away our tears. And there will be rejoicing. And it's importantly, I think it's particularly important today as we start the beginning of a lot more that it's going to get ramped up, right? There's an election coming up on Tuesday. And between now and Tuesday, there's going to be lots of things going on. And, and, it's, and it's not going to be the end, right? Because the election day is not going to be the end. There's going to be lots of things going on afterwards. Who really won? Did we really ratify? Yada, yada, yidi, yidi, yada, yada, right? And there's a lot of worry in our society of how are we going to survive this election? How are we going to survive this election, right? The end is near. The end of the war, as we, the, you know, as the, the, the Americas, as we've known it, is going to, it's just going to go away. And, and I don't care who you support, you feel, most people, regardless of who they support, have this feeling that if this person wins, the end of the United States as we know it is going to end, and if you vote, if this person wins, the end of the United States as we know it is going to end, right? And so there is this big fear. And I just want to bring some uh, to attention the role the church has played throughout history. From its inception, the church was birthed in a lot of chaos, and a lot of hurt, and a lot of trouble. The church was birthed under a lot of chaos, a lot of trouble, a lot of suffering, a lot of hurt. And it was that time that Jesus came and said, look, pay attention to each other. Love one another. Because the rulers of the world care about something else. 
The rulers of the world cause a lot of this destruction. So don't put your trust on the rulers of the world. Put your trust in God. God is the one that keeps God's promises. And so let me tell you how to be more faithful. Let me tell you how to live better. And so these people believed. And they started trying this out. And they started living this away. And famines came. And wars came. <laughs> this is not the first time the world as we know it is going to disappear. The temple was destroyed. The world as they know it was ended. And yet it didn't end. Because God keeps God's promises. And so God will continue to get, keep God's promises. Just look back at history of humanity. Is this the first time we've been had lots of wars? Is this the first time a political empire is on the verge of destruction? Is this the first time there's been fires and pandemics and famine? It's not. It's not. But God has been present always. And if we put our trust in God and follow Jesus' teaching as, as he made God known to us by being amongst us, then we will also overcome this too. And remembering that at the end of the day, at the end of all that is said and done, it is in God we put our trust because we know that God keeps God's promises. And in the revelation of John, John reminds us that a new earth and a new heaven will be made new, right? And it will come down. And God will be the king of it all, putting all things right. And so that is going to happen. Not today, not tomorrow. So, but we're invited to begin that foretaste of what that could look like, what that can be like. And so we have the saints that have gone before us, who modeled, who taught us, who gave us examples of how to survive this world so that we can begin to see the kingdom of God at hand. Because this is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice his salvation. Amen. I invite you all to stand as you're able. And so let us use the words of the Nicene Creed to reaffirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Loving God, creator of this world, who is the source of our wisdom and understanding, watch over this nation during this time of election. 
Help us to see how our faith informs our principles and actions. God, our creator, we give thanks for the right to vote. Help us to hold this privilege and responsibility with care and awareness it merits, realizing that our vote matters and that it is an act of faith. God, our creator, guide us through this election as a nation, state, and community as we vote for people to do work on our behalf and on the behalf of our communities. Help us to vote for people and ballot initiatives that will better our community and our world so that it may reflect the values of, that Christ taught us. God, our creator, God, help us create communities that will build your kingdom here on earth, communities that will protect the poor, stand up for the vulnerable, advocate for those who are not seen and heard, and listen to everyone's voice. God, our creator. God, we pray for this nation that is deeply divided. May we come together for the common good and do as you have called us to do, to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you through creation. God, our creator. God, Help us to act out of love, mercy, and justice rather than out of arrogance or fear. God, our creator. Lord, continue to guide us as we work for the welfare of this world. We, play, we pray for places that are torn by violence, that they may know peace. God, our creator. We pray for communities who are struggling with the inequality, unrest, and fear. May we all work towards reconciliation with one another and with God. God, our creator. Help us to listen in love, work together in peace, and collaborate with one another as we seek the betterment of our community and world. God, our creator. At this time, we want to lift up with our voices and hearts those who have gone before us, those whom we know and those whom we don't know. And as Madre Minerva and I finish, go through the list, and when we're done, we'll give you time to add your own, the names that come to you that you want to include in this prayer. So we lift up in prayer Katita, Becky, PC, Cesar, Don, Valerie, Helen, Michael, Sandra, Terry, Jean, Deb, Rex, Louise, Lisa. Maria and Jesus, Cari, Rodolfo, Pedro, Chata, Manuel de Jesus, Marcelino, Rosa, Celia, Gabriela, Luigi, Sammy, Francisco. Jose Luis, Julio Cesar, LD, Nevada, Rocky, Margie, Rick, Joe, Mary, Floyd, Linda, Thomas, Marjorie, Alan, Jerry. Rosemary, Alan, Elizabeth, Sam, Charles, Mary, Henry, Eric, Margaret, Louise, Tom, Robert, <coughs> Kenneth, Doris. Doris, Sally, Pat, Jimmy, Barbie, Del, Felix, Santos, Amador, Celia, Bill, Anne, 
Jane, Sandy, Diana, Patty, Francis, Virginia, Bob, Pauline, Becky, Gabriel, Leticia, Jose, Victorina, Natalia, Ismael, Micaela, Isabel, Asuncion, Octavio, Domingo, Jesus, Pete, Barbara, Gerald, Andy, Faye, Bennett, China, Yetta, Ham. Are there any others? At this time, I'm overwhelmed all those lovely voices and faces and names. At this time, we pray for, lift up our prayers for the election, not only for those who are voting and those who are wishing to be voted into an office, but all those workers, those people that are manning the polling stations counting the votes, running the machines, and all the dangers that some of them are facing. And we also lift up all these countries that are experiencing war, especially Sudan, Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, Lebanon, and the list goes on. Let us pray for peace in the world with a prayer for peace among all nations on your together, on your pusey. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth, and establish among them that peace, which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us also pray for growing the congregation. Lord God, help us to be a welcoming place for visitors and prospective members. Help us to grow and serve your people here and in our broader community. Grant us grace to be the church you mean for us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray for healing and guidance for our loved ones, and especially Karen, Frank, Doug, Carol, Anne, Jennifer, Michael, Sue, Nancy, Stephanie, Kaya. Are there others? We also remember and pray for all of our loved ones who are on this list, the daughters of the king, pray for daily. Let us pray for strength and confidence together. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us, we're going to celebrate anniversaries, but I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to mention this one anniversary because they want to get their prayers next week, not this week. So we can thank God for Roger and, and Ruth as they celebrate their anniversary this week. We also give thanks to God for those who are celebrating birthdays, especially Sherry, Anne, Mike, Sandra, Jimmy, and Maria. So I think Sherry said we already prayed for her, but Anne Faithful was here earlier. Mike? 
Vem na cá. Let us pray for the birthday together. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for Mike and others. May they continue to know your presence, give them the courage and the strength that they need to serve you with all their hearts and all their minds and all their souls. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and all the world, but I will be done, and I will be done, and I will be done. We have not done the Lord of our heart, we have not done the Lord of our heart, we have not done the Lord of our heart, we have truly sorry and have no remittance. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be one and forgive and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So, as I, uh, mo as I started our, our service with some quiet, just in recognition that it's going to be a very loud and noisy week. So, we're going to kick it off with some loud and noisiness, too. I mean, come on, right? We can do quiet, we can do loud, we can celebrate. So, we're going to, uh, some of you have already partake, partaken of the beautiful celebration that began about 9.30ish this morning in the parish hall. There is decorations, there is cheese, there is more cheese and muffins and lots of other goodies out there. So please continue to celebrate and in fellowship with one another, remembering our faith community, strengthening one another and encouraging one another to do God's will. So please enjoy, join us after the, after the service to continue to munch away. Um, we are, you see the box? People who've been here for many years know what the box means. The box means that it's time to um, bring our offerings, our estimate of giving. There's cards if you don't, if you didn't get a letter, there's some cards in the back. If you have filled it out, please turn it in during our offering. Come on up and put it in there. I put mine in at 8.30. Uh, I invite you to do the same. Last week we had a kind of a soft beginning, but this is our official, our really hard uh, uh, sub, uh, turning in our estimates of our giving. So I hope you've prayed, you've discerned, you've thought about that, and you're going to put your um, your card in. Um, and just to just to show how uh, how our generosity just goes 
Um, there's, there are no bounds for generosity in this congregation. The Daughters of the King worked very hard on Saturday to put together the boxes that we give away to Ash. And their goal was 60 boxes, and they actually filled up 65 boxes. So congratulations. Thank you, Daughters of the King. They exceeded their goal. Also, at the fair, at the big festival last Sunday, thank you all of you who participated in that, who came, who bought tickets, who sold tickets, who bought food, who made food, all the things that it requires to have a fun festival. We also exceeded our goal. The goal was $4,000. We, we, I don't know the final, but it's closer to $4,500, maybe $4,600 at the end of the day. So thank you all for all that. It's wonderful. You probably have seen the bulletin of who went on what and all that kind of fun stuff. So again, thank you all for that. Um, and we want, I look at the bulletin. There's lots of things in the bulletins, but I want to highlight a couple of things. One is in the, on the back, you'll see a big poster board that says, I voted. Put your sticker, put your name, do, you know, just put, our, put, put your name if you voted. So we are really hoping we get our ice cream prize this year. Those St. Matthews people got it last year, but this year I think we have a good chance. So put your sticker, put your signature, let us know that you voted and we'll collect them all. Uh, Ms. Ruby is, is joy, is, uh, has agreed to do the submissions and all that to HJAN so we can send in our, our, our numbers, so that'd be great. You also have probably noticed in the um, in the bulletin that it's time for election for in January. So if you qualify, the qualifications are there. If you qualify and you're interested in serving in the dias in the as a vestry member or delegate, please uh, submit that information to us so we can start going through that. And then, again, continue generosity day in and day out. The men's group next Sunday is going to provide a meal. Very excited about that. So please come again next Sunday so you can enjoy their, um, their great cooks uh, in our community. And they're going to share their, their gifts of cooking and their generosity and so that we can enjoy a nice meal next Sunday. After the service, yes, after the service. And um, yes, we trust our God. Yes, our God is our Savior, and we have to do our bit. So I'm going to remind you, this will be the last time I say this, uh, probably for the rest of the year, until there's runoffs, because there will be runoffs. But for now, for this election, if you haven't voted, please go vote. If you have voted, and you have people in your lives that are still thinking about it, haven't decided whether they're gonna vote or not, whether or not they wanna participate or not, please encourage them to do that. I am very proud to say that I got a text from my son from North Dakota saying, ya vote. Because <laughs> I've been haggling him for quite a while now, so he's like, leave me alone. I've done it. So, uh, so yes, so we sometimes, some, uh, some people need a little encouragement, but I think it's kind of, it's a fun, you know, as we're gonna celebrate, it just remind people, we gotta participate, right? We gotta participate, we gotta do our bit. God will take care of the rest, but we gotta do our bit. All right. Brothers and sisters, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us. And together with them, receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel and to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your gifts of the Holy Spirit that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. John's and the Virgin Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
as a people of faith, as a community of faith, we pray together. And so during our times here in this world, when things seem strange or fearful, we recognize that as humans, we feel that. And so what we do is we gather, and we pray and we worship. And so, wanted to uh, remind you that this went, that this Tuesday during the election, this church will be open. If you want to come in, this church will be open to come and to pray. And on Wednesday afternoon uh, at seven o'clock, you will know in you'll see in your bulletin that there is going to be a hope, a service of hope. And so that's going to start at 7 o'clock. The bishop is going to be leading that uh, service, and you can join that from the comfort of your own home. Just hit the button, and you can join in. Or if you're like me, who like people and need people, right, we gather. You can come and gather here. So the choir is going to be singing uh, part of that service, which will be great. So we'll have a projection. We'll have a... Uh, you know, the, everybody can participate here together. So, very excited that the St. John. There will there. It's because it's on Zoom. It'll be more like an evening prayer. It's it's ta it's a it's a it's a uh, shaped as an evening prayer with some some prayers and some additional prayers. But very excited that St. John's will be represented. You know, as part of the diocese, and there'll be the choir will be singing. So come and support them if you can. Um, or if it's, and I understand it's 7 o'clock, it'll be dark, and some of you don't drive in the dark, and I get that. So just log on and zoom in, and you can participate via, via Zoom. So just wanted to make sure that that, I wanted to leave that to remind you that our, our church will be open on Tuesday and that we will be gathering to pray as a way to launch what we do, serve. And so we invite you, there are opportunities in our bulletin of ways you can volunteer and you can serve during the week throughout the diocese. People are doing uh, volunteer service and action and, and, activ and activities to love one another, and that's what we do. Um, on Friday, the uh, El Buen Samaritano has a, uh, a uh, van that distributes food. If you want to can help out, I know some of you already do that on a regular basis. Uh, Maria can tell you more about that, but if you want to come and, 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 and help with the food distribution or look at the options that are available uh, for the week to, to go out there and serve and love one another. No, the, the bishop will be leading the service on Wednesday evening. Yes, yes. Well, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go into the world following the footsteps of the saints who have walked before us and rejoicing in the power of the love of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.